Donald Trump is the most deviant man ever to live in the White House. He's unhinged. It's embarrassing. I can't pretend and sort of try and cover this fairly. So as you saw there, there's no shortage of hostility toward President Trump in the media. Fox News Howie Kurtz says it is at an unprecedented level in terms of coverage of White Houses. And he writes about it in his new book, Media Madness, which is tearing up the charts. Howie Kurtz is here, Fox News media analyst and host of Media Buzz. Uh, good, good to see you, Howie. Oh, you know, it's interesting to, to document what's going on here from sort of a 30,000 foot and look at it and say, Let, let's be rational about the situation. How did it get so bad and why is it? We just saw CNN's Don Lemon call the president unhinged. Jared Kushner has a line he likes to use when people say that about his father. He says, no, he makes other people unhinged. Mm -hmm. Look, what I try to do here with a lot of exclusive reporting is to examine this phenomenon I call Trump trauma. Journalists who privately disparage the president, both in private conversations and on Twitter, uh, an unprecedented barrage in tone and volume of negative coverage. We've never seen anything like it, and we've had some years in the news business. Uh, some of that is driven not just by ideology, but what I call a cultural resentment of Donald Trump, the man and his style. And of course, the president fans the flames at times by disregarding his aides' advice and going after journalists by name, all of which has resulted in a very dysfunctional and at times hostile relationship. Just looking at, you know, some of the folks that were in that montage, Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough at one point were, you know, sort of accused of having too cozy a relationship. And then it went the other way. And you say you have some revelations about exactly what happened there in your book. Right. Well, they were friends. And then uh, Joe and Mika got rather tough on candidate Trump during the campaign. There was a makeup session uh, first at Mar-a-Lago, then one at the White House. But after that, Scarborough criticized the new president in pretty strong terms. Uh, President Trump called him and said, you know, I invite you over for the White House and this is how you treat me. Uh, it's gotten very, very personal. Donald Trump feels betrayed. Joe and Mika feel like uh, they are chronicling a, a, a president who they have serious doubts about. Sometimes their language may go a little far. They've even acknowledged that. Of course, they're supposed to be the conservative and the liberal. And that actually underscores how in the news business, um, people on the right as well as the left, uh, are very, very hostile to this president. There's some fair reporters out there, to be sure, the legitimate stories. But look how quickly the coverage moved, Martha, from a fairly successful State of the Union to back to pounding Russia, Russia, Russia. All right. Moving on to another story uh, that we are watching closely here, especially mm -hmm. football fans. Uh, Fox is going to have Thursday night football now. What does it mean for, for the company? What do you think it means for, for the Future. There's no question that that is a coup for Fox, but Fox is paying more than $3 billion for those rights. And that says to me that even though the ratings have been down this year, it's been a very controversial season for the NFL because of the anthem protests, it's still an incredibly lucrative franchise for the networks. It would be good for both the league and for all the networks that, that pay all this money to the NFL if somehow uh, we could move beyond the protests and get the protests under control so we can concentrate on the on-field yeah, behavior. Speaking of the on-field behavior, yeah. uh, the Super Bowl is coming up this weekend, of course, and generally uh, there's been an interview at halftime with the president of the United States. Uh, that is, that's not going to happen this time around. And I am not shocked that President Trump is choosing not to sit down with NBC carrying the Super Bowl this year. Uh, in fact, uh, at a luncheon, off-the-record luncheon before the speech, uh, he got into it with NBC's Lester Holt, who would probably conduct an interview. He took a swipe at NBC's Chuck Todd, who we sometimes talk to off the record, but they are. I, I was there. I can't confirm any of that. Yeah, of course you can't. But since I wasn't there, I can tell you that that happened. Uh, and, you know, usually those Super Bowl with that huge audience is a great platform for any president. Yeah. This president talks to the press a lot, despite the uh, contentious relationship. And given his Twitter megaphone, he doesn't actually need to do that. He can just stay home and watch football. Let's look at uh, an interchange with, with Lester Holt that may have uh, provoked the decision not to do this. Watch this. You saw images of Republicans burning their Republican registration cards. So your, your negatives are staggering. How much of that is self-inflicted by some of the rhetoric from the primary campaign? I think the president came away not pleased by that. And some of those are fair questions. But also, you know, he has a thing about NBC because he worked for NBC with The Apprentice. He always said, I made that network so much money. That doesn't mean the NBC News division should go easy on him. But I think because NBC has the Super Bowl this year, I think Donald Trump's just decided to uh, get the Diet Coke and the popcorn and not uh, do the interview. Do you see any of this changing? You know, people ask me that, and I would love to give an optimistic answer. I thought in the beginning of the administration there might be a thaw. Yeah. The press, most of it, is so dug in with this anti-Trump narrative. The president is so resentful that I think this, is gonna, this war is going to go on for a long time. Thanks, Harry.